Now the right tyre pressure to run is a campfire discussion whenever you get a few off-roaders together. Everybody's got an opinion, everybody's got some experience for what's worked for them. When asked what pressure they run in their trailer tyres, a lot of people will respond with the same as the car. And I want to just run through with you today why that may not be the best answer. Now when it comes to working out the best pressure for your trailer tyres, the answer is right here in the fine print on the sidewall of your tyre. Now working out the answer does mean a little bit of simple mathematics, but I'll walk you through it and show you just how easy it is. In late 2020, Patriot campers changed their tyre supply from the Federal Courageia to the Max Trex Mud Track tyre. They're both fairly similar in load rating, so these calculations can apply to both. So for those of you who haven't looked at the fine print on your tyres, it includes some data around the load range that the tyre is designed to accept. Typically, you'll have a dual and a single axle rating. In our case, we're interested in the single axle rating and the mud track tyres that are supplied with the current range of Patriot campers has a maximum load range rating of 1500 kilograms at a cold inflation pressure of 65 PSI. So to finish our calculation, we need to have a look at the trailer itself. The Patriot Campers X3 has an aggregate trailer mass when fully loaded of 1600 kilograms. But we can take about 100 kilograms of that away because that weight is supported by the tow ball or DO35 pin in the case of a Patriot camper, which leaves us with an axle load of 1500 kilograms and each of the two tyres therefore takes 750 kilograms. Now the recommended tyre pressure is a simple ratio or calculation where we look at the actual tyre load divided by the maximum tyre rated load and multiply it by the tyre maximum pressure. When we do the sums, we have 750 kilograms divided by 1500 times 65 gives us a recommendation of 32.5 PSI. For practicality, I nominally run a tyre pressure of 35. I'll run you through the same calculations for the tyres on my tow vehicle and show you just how different the outcome is in terms of the optimum tyre pressure. Now many of us are running higher quality tyres on our vehicle than come on a Patriot camper. In my case, I'm running Nitto Ridge Grapplers, which are a premium American made tyre, similar to Mickey Thompson's and others that are out there. They're relatively stiff, have a much heavier ply construction than the Max Trex, and have therefore a higher load rating and higher maximum pressure. Now we can do the same calculation for the Land Cruiser. However, in this case, we've got two separate axles to account for. The Nitto Ridge Grappler tyres I run on my car have a maximum rated load of 1800 kilograms and a maximum inflation pressure of 80 psi. The front axle over the Weybridge comes in at around 1700 kilograms and the rear axle with the load of the Patriot Camper on the hitch comes in at 2145 kilograms. That brings me up to my GVM of 3,845. The actual tyre load on the front, 850 kilos, and on the rear, 1,073 kilos. We do the same calculation, and we can see that my front recommended tyre pressure is 37.8 PSI, and the rear is 47.8. Again, for practicality, I round those numbers to a nominal tyre pressure at the front of 40 and at the rear of 45 PSI. Now the numbers that we've been talking about are on-road tyre pressures, typical of what you would run on a bitumen road with normal environmental conditions up to the regulated speed limit of 110 kilometres per hour in most cases. But what happens when we go off-road? Well, it really depends a little on 
the conditions that you're driving in. But when you're on a gravel road, driving at high speeds, relatively speaking, I'd normally bring the on-road pressures down to around 75%. So we're now talking 25 pound in the camper, 30 pound in the front of the Land Cruiser, and 35 PSI in the rear of the Land Cruiser. If we go a little further off-road, onto some sand or mud that's relatively firm, and we can still achieve speeds up around that 50 kilometres an hour, I'd be down to 18 PSI in the camper, 18 PSI in the front of the Land Cruiser, and 20 in the rear of the Land Cruiser. If we go that little bit further, as we're inclined to do when things get soft and sticky, we go down to the minimum pressures that you would expect to run before you're in danger of rolling the tyre off the wheel bead. In the case of the camper, I'd normally look at around 12 pound. You could maybe sneak down to 10. And that's because the trailer doesn't have to do much driving or steering. I'd go down to around 15 pound in the front of the Land Cruiser. The main danger there is that when you're turning a corner, the side load could peel the tire away from the rim bead. If you're in really difficult country at very low speeds, you could probably go down to 12 on the front of the car. And similarly, in the rear of the Land Cruiser, I'd drop it down to that same 15 pound. But again, prepare to go down to 12 if things get really tough. So as you can see, each tire on the rig requires a different inflation pressure to run at its optimum. If I filled all of the tires to the 47 PSI required in the Land Cruiser's rear, we'd be running the trailer 12 PSI higher than required, or 34% more than necessary. Now this would lead to a very firm ride for the trailer and its contents, it would put more load through the suspension and rattle the contents around a lot more than needed, and it would possibly lead to abnormal wear in the centre of the trailer tyres. Now I've calculated based on maximum load in both the vehicle and trailer. Of course I don't always run at those loads, particularly in the Land Cruiser. When I'm running around town empty without the trailer on the back, I run lower pressures than I've calculated here. So you would need to do the same sums for your particular vehicle. Now all rigs are different and may require different optimum tyre inflation pressures. A good way to verify that the calculation is working for you is to apply the four pound or four PSI rule. What this means is you would normally expect your tyre pressure to increase around four PSI between cold and hot operation. So after setting your cold tyre pressures in the morning, drive for an hour or two and check your pressures again. If they've gone up by more than four PSI, your starting pressure was too low. If they've gone up by less than four PSI, your tyre pressure was likely too high. It also goes without saying that if you're juggling your tyre pressures on the fly, particularly if you're changing conditions of the road that you're driving on, you're going to need a compressor and a reliable way of checking your tyre pressures. And I use the Max Trax Indeflate and I've got a compressor built into the vehicle. This makes it very quick to pump up and also to air down as required. But you can do the same thing with a simple compressor and a regular tyre pressure gauge. Now we know that looking after our tyres is one of the key safety aspects of vehicle operation and it's never more important than when you're off-road. Well guys, that wraps up this video. Hopefully you found it useful and gives you a bit more insight into the tyre pressures you should be running. I'm sure many of you will have an opinion, either different or matching mine. So please put that in the comments, start a bit of a discussion and it may inform some other that don't have the same level of experience.